also poor maintenance over the years. There's been a lot of the plow vehicles who drive over them with the steel edge, which is not a good practice versus concrete. Um, so a lot of our sidewalks, basically it's just the front portion where the main portion of the traffic is right now. Um, that's what we'd be replacing. The curbs have also deteriorated out there. Those obviously weren't affected by the plows, so that's kind of a, a evidence of the curbing falling apart due to poor construction. So this project would just replace that portion of it out front, and then moving forward to ensure that the longevity of these is going to be ensured, we would get different plow setups and snow removal treatments for the front sidewalks. We'd use a plastic polymer edge out there, mandated instead of steel. Um, also, as part of the initial project, we would get a salt guard installed on there so that the water and uh, penetration wouldn't get into the sidewalks as much. And then we would do it biannually. We'd do it in the spring and the fall to ensure that the sidewalks are properly treated and we don't get a, a results like we have now. And we can make sure this investment lasts quite a long time. So thank you. Any questions or comments on Article 11? Seeing none, all those in favor of Article 11 signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed? And we declare it a majority. Article 12, the town appropriate the sum of $21,755 to complete the installation of columns at Sheffield Elementary School, including replacing wood and trim railings, masonry work at the landing, and any and all incidental and related costs said some to be raised from free cash. Do I have a motion on Article 12? Do I have a second? Any discussion? Any questions? Right over here. Hi. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, I'm Denise Milkey, Precinct 6. I'm just curious of what material are the columns that we previously purchased that aren't installed yet? What are they made out of? They're a composite material. So, so they're not wood? No. And how are they currently being stored? They're currently, I put them underneath a bunch of tarps this uh, fall before the snow and everything went on them. So they're up off of the ground on some pallets. They're wrapped in tarps. And they're so, covered in tarps. Yeah. So if we do choose to appropriate more than double what we've already spent, we're not going to find them damaged when we go to install them? We shouldn't, no. Okay, that was my question. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Ducharme. I just have a quick question. After you replace all the columns, and for those of you people who are as, just as old as I am and who've been when we went to grammar school there, who was going to go through those doors? Because we were never able to walk through those doors to get into the building. And if you do go up to that door, undoubtedly it's going to have a little bit of a sign that says, go to the other side of the building and press the button. So I, I'm, I'm not trying to be sarcastic, but for those of you people who have... You know, you went there as grammar school and you went there as, as junior high. We never went through those doors. We never went through the front doors over here at uh, Sheffield. Not even Mr. Wrightson or anybody else walked through those doors. Everybody went, everybody went through the side doors. <coughs> so will you be able to go through the front door? Those doors are part of the administration building and the access door to that building that the camera is on that's buzzed in is still to the side. So this won't increase the ability of those doors to actually be used. Those columns are going to continue to deteriorate. Right. And actually, the cost of this project would be a little bit more if we were going to use that landing as a regular entry. Because right now, as part of this, we're going to basically repoint the brick. Because right now, there's saplings growing out of the cracks in the brick and everything. If we were going to use that as a main entry, we'd, this project would probably cost more because we'd have to completely redo all the brick that's there. This is basically to get those columns that are rotting to the point where you can kind of push your hand through certain portions of them to get those off of the building. Um, and get railings put on there because right now we have caution tape because we have uh, the brick landings above 18 inches above the ground so by code we have to have something indicating there's a drop off right there so okay. um, this is really an ornamental process but it's it's something that's necessary on the school I mean they're deteriorating falling apart Mr. Ellis sure I just want to make certain that everybody understands that uh, all of the special articles that are of capital improvement nature were very carefully reviewed um, by the Capital Improvements Committee. I know our chairman, uh, Josh Lively, is here and certainly available to comment um, on any of the individual articles. This is one where there was a belief originally 
that the school could do the installation themselves under a previous facilities manager. Um, we are very strongly supportive of uh, having a professional and insured company come in to uh, complete this work. And, uh, you know, just want everyone to know that these projects were very carefully vetted by the CIC and then um, further vetted and presented to the Finance Committee as well as the Board of Selectmen. Thank you, Steve. Any other questions, comments? Oh, Mr. Widmer. Again, Richard Widmer, Precinct 2, and I'm asking, um, since you brought up through the moderator, please, since you brought up the Capital Improvements Committee, Steve, um, how long, and also through the moderator, possibly to the superintendent or the facilities director, how long do we foresee Sheffield and Hillcrest being viable? Um, how, what other more spending will we be making on these buildings in the future? Can they, how long will they continue to exist, uh, do we think? Not, I'm happy to take a first stab at that, and Mr. Cummings can chime in. I, I think you can, but I'm not entirely sure that that is germane to this particular article, but I'll allow it at this point. Um, I, I would say from the standpoint of public safety, um, as this particular article presents um, correction of something that is a risk if someone were to inadvisably go up on these stairs, um, that this investment relative to the expected continued use of the building is a very safe and appropriate one. Uh, it is very difficult to know as we have conversations about extra regionalization potentially, um, exactly what buildings will be used how in 5, 10, or 15 years. Um, but this is a very viable building, and if it's not used as an elementary school, uh, it is a town-owned building, and it will certainly be used in some other fashion um, or disposed of, uh, and this would make it more valuable. hope that's helpful. Ariel? Ariel Elon, Precinct 1. I have an interesting take on all of this, very much in support of the article, because as a member of the Energy Committee, I have been working on research for different heating and cooling solutions for those three buildings, the two Sheffield buildings and Hillcrest. So I've had the honor of actually walking through and walking around these buildings with professional auditors that were provided to us by UMass. This is very recently. One of the things I've become very attuned to is that a building is much more like a human body than most of us believe. You have any part of the envelope of a building that is starting to deteriorate and it gives, uh, they call it in the profession, ingress. It gives access for all kinds of additional problems and deterioration that you didn't anticipate to enter your building. So even if you're not actually going through those doors every day, you really need, as long as you're using a structure, just like your body, you really need to repair anything that is deteriorating because one bit of deterioration leads to another and another and another. Any other comments or questions? Is that time? Who is it? Everett Smith, Precinct 3. How long have those columns been sitting outside on this job? Um, to me, I just see we're wasting more and more money. We waited for that to get this bad. Anybody want to respond to that? So they. The project, I think, initiated for improvement um, of the money in 2016, and they were purchased around that time. So my guess is they've been outside for almost two years. But like I said, as soon as I got here and saw the, how long this project had been sitting there and the progress that it's made and how, much, how little we were going to be able to do over the winter, I immediately had my staff you know, purchase coverings for them to preserve them, knowing that this was going to be one of the first projects that I could tackle in the spring whenever we came here for the vote. So. They were in good condition when I went there, and I tried to preserve them the best I could as soon as I got here. Yeah, but it's the rest of the structure that they let deteriorate during this process. The, the structure was pretty deteriorated. I mean, there was, there was nothing more that could be done you know, over the winter. So, um, I mean, the columns, looking at them, they're structurally, 
you know, they're intact for the moment. They don't appear to be very load bearing, um, but they are cylindrical columns of the hollow center. They do provide, you know, upward and downward resistance. So, um, you know, the structure doesn't look immediately in danger, but it was, it was too much for my staff to want to take on, to remove those columns and do all that kind of stuff. I wasn't safe. Um, I didn't have a safe feeling about them taking that kind of project on. So, um, but moving forward on it as soon as possible is something I definitely want to, want to get done this summer if we can. Any other comments or questions on Article 12? Kathy. Hi. So I remember the vote where we uh, voted to uh, give the allocation for the columns. So I'm, I'm actually surprised. I think my feedback at the time was to allocate more to finish the project. So this is this allocation was made for the materials three years ago, and now three years later, your, the department, the school department, is requesting the money to actually do the project. So maybe future-minded, those things could be linked together, so that you can start and finish the project, and we don't have to wait for construction costs to go up every year. That feels like it would be a better moving forward plan. Under my direction, that will be the plan. I was not the one who initiated this project, but immediately getting here and seeing, you know, the way this was organized, um, you know, it's it's up to the particular person who is creating these projects and moving forward. It's it's not typical that the uh, the administration would have such fine details into what this project would entail. The project manager would. So I think they were under the impression that they could finish this project with in-house staff, but. I don't know, maybe having maybe a different level of experience, you know, I can see that's incorrect. But moving forward, any projects that are under my direction will definitely include all costs associated. In-house staff will only do projects that they're licensed and able and ability, you know, the abilities that they have to do them. So, any other comments or questions on Article 12? Seeing that we can vote. All those in favor of Article 12, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. Declare it unanimous. Article 13, that the town appropriate the sum of $35,344 for the purpose of purchasing and equipping a truck for the Gilmonte Regional School District Facilities Management Department, including any and all incidental and related costs, said sum to be raised from free cash. Do I have a motion on Article 13? Second. Moved and seconded. Any questions or comments on Article 13? Seeing none, all those in favor of Article 13, signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, declare it unanimous. Article 14, move that the town appropriate the sum of $16,250 for the purpose of hiring a contractor to provide valuation services relating to the natural gas and electric transmission distribution utility properties located in town, including any and all incidental and related costs, said sum to be raised from free cash. Do I have a motion on Article 14? Second. Moved and seconded. Any questions or comments on this? Seeing none, all those in favor of Article 14 signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed? Declare it unanimous. Article 15. Move that the town appropriate the sum of $50,000 for the purpose of hiring a contractor to provide specialty property valuation services for hydroelectric generating facilities, including any and all incidental and related costs, said some to be raised from free cash. Motion on Article 15. Any second? Moved and seconded on Article 15. Any discussion or questions? Mr. Wisniewski. Mark Wisniewski, Precinct 2. Uh, so the simple question I have um, is that do, do the assessors believe that the 50,000 expenditure usually is made up in the, in the appraisals? Thank you. Karen Tonelli, are you here? Oh, there you are. Come on down to the front and maybe you can answer that question. Hello, my name's Karen Tonelli, Director of Assessing. Um, the $50,000 is an estimate. Um, it may be 30, it may be 40. We've gone out to bid. We really don't know how much it will cost exactly. Um, and as far as making it up, um, we're not quite sure what the ultimate appraisal will be. That's the opinion of the appraiser. Um, I think our purpose here is to simply make sure that we get current and accurate data and assessments every three years for 
what is our largest uh, tax generating property. Any other questions? Mr. Jensen? I know we've had a few fights with utility companies, and it st strikes me that way back in the past, these were usually worked out in in house. But so I guess what's changing that seems that this expenditure is getting what regular every three years. So the actual expenditure of hiring an appraiser is something that's necessary, whether or not they'd be contesting the assessment or not. Uh, the Department of Revenue requires every three years when we had a reval year that a special use property like this um, cannot be valued by someone in the assessing department. We just don't have the ability. So a professional um, is hired for this purpose. So that's the every three years. As far as why we have not been able to resolve this litigation, um, I can't speak to what happened in the past, but we've certainly, with the Finance Committee and the Select Board, have had many discussions in terms of trying to resolve this, but it does take two parties to try to come to a resolution, and um, so far that hasn't happened. We have had the one court case uh, back in June uh, where we were successful. Um, and we are waiting for it to go through the courts, through the appeal process. And First Light does have the ability to um, have their day in court for each and every year subsequent to that. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on Article 15? Right here. Um, as a, uh, a realtor, I've had experience in how do you say, it? praising properties. Um, and the appraisal of this kind of property is a very um, specialized field. Very few people do it. And when you're up against a great big company um, with their appeals, you really need to have uh, professional expertise and backup to help you um, achieve fair values. So I would certainly support this article. Any other comments or questions? Ariel? I just want to support what Lynn said. Uh, corporations have endless money and great skill in uh, keeping their costs down and their profits up, no matter whose expense it is at. This is very sad, but I just, we really need the professional backup. Any other questions, comments, Kathy? So I just had one question, which is this kind of housekeeping question. The Warren is asking for fifty thousand dollars, and you just provided um, information that it could cost thirty, it could cost forty. So is that general point of housekeeping? In the future, I'd like to see that go out to bid and then come back with a hard number and not something with a twenty thousand dollar range. So we have gone out to bid. There's currently a bid listed on our website where we're seeking bids, and the bids will be opened on May twentieth. The problem is that we don't know what the companies will bid. So we want to appropriate enough money rather than uh, perhaps having a bid that comes in too high and having to come back and do this process um, to actually hire them. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, we can vote. All those in favor of Article 15 signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed? Declare it unanimous. Article 16. Move that the town appropriate the sum of $20,000 for the purpose of purchasing, equipping, and making major repairs to the water pollution control facility vehicles and equipment, including any and all incidental and related costs, said sum to be raised from sewer user fees. Do I have a motion on Article 16? Do I have a second? Moved and seconded on Article 16. Anybody have any comments or questions on Article 16? Mr. Jensen.
first of all, why is this a special article, and is this the what we would normally term the slush fund, the one that they can spend on almost anything? And and if so, why is it a special article and not folded into the budget if it's for all the things that look like a water pollution control facility would need and anticipate? Bob McDonald, uh, are you here to answer that question, please? Hi, everyone. Um, the money, the funds are, are used uh, basically for emergency repairs. And um, we try to. You have to get a little closer to the mic, I think. Uh, or pick it up, or take it off the stand if you want. That's right. Good, good. How's that? Can everyone hear me? All right. I mumble anyway, so you probably won't understand what I'm saying. Um, the, uh, the, the money is used really for emergencies, uh, and most uh, we try to use the, uh, our own and budget um, for any repairs and any day-to-day uh, -day operations. This money is for if we have a major piece of equipment to go d that goes down and we need additional funding to uh, deal with it or a pump station to deal with it. So it's kind of there as a, um, a safety net um, more than anything else. So, I mean, it's the last resource that I would try to use as far as uh, money spending on the, on the treatment facility. Any other questions or comments? Um, Peter, and then we'll go back to you. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, one second, Mike. Well, you're next. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, Peter Gore, Precinct 2. Um, just looking for a little clarification. In the background, it says the uh, remaining balance would stay in that account. Um, would that actually go to the WPCF uh, retained earnings account? Carolyn? I need my Kieran's mic on. Because it's, this is why it's a special article. Because the balance, that if there is a balance left, it will remain in that article and available for use without further appropriation. If it were part of the budget and it were not used, then it would flow into the retained earnings for the following year. Okay. So, do we have any other outstanding articles for WPCF equipment? Is this the only article that's outstanding for that right now? For, or are there other balances left? For in? their equipment, yes. They have other special articles, but not of this variety. Okay, so they're, they're okay, that answers. Thank okay. you. Uh, Mike? Was there someone else? Well, we have Pete, Mr. Jensen. So first you, and then <laughs> Mr. Jensen. So go ahead, Michael. Uh, well, I'd like to say I think uh, David Jensen asked a good question. Uh, I was the abstention on this vote for the Finance Committee uh, because I do have uh, concerns may be too strong a word, but I, I don't see a good argument for this not being in the budget, uh, although I was convinced uh, not to vote against it, um, largely on the basis of the fact that this is an enterprise fund, and so it's not as easy to use the reserve fund transfer to handle emergency cases. Um, this fund is new, uh, it has not existed in the past. Uh, I'm not aware of any problems that have been, have resulted from not having it. And I think it may be solving a problem that doesn't really exist. Yeah, I, I'd just like to make a comment on uh, one of the things that how we used the money last year. So, um, a few years back, they replaced two pump stations, came to about $1.5 million to replace those two pump stations. Um, I had a, uh, an article last year to do uh, upgrades on two additional pump stations. Um, I didn't appropriate enough to do everything I needed to get done on those two pump stations, so we were able to use this discretionary fund to help complete um, and, and being completed, uh, the upgrade of two of the pump stations. So for approximately forty, fifty thousand dollars to upgrade the two pump stations, I felt it was a much better value 
um, than the 1.5 million to, to replace whole pump stations, and we're getting the same bang for the buck now out of those pump stations. Thank you. David and then Rich. Uh, my original hand up was to ask the Finance Committee the question of why can't they release the funds and have some general oversight over this money? And if I get it right, it cannot be part of your reserve fund, the Finance Committee's reserve fund? John? John or Carolyn? There is not a the treatment plant does not have its own reserve fund. The town's reserve fund can be used and has been used in the past to fund extraordinary and unforeseen expenditures from the sewer plant. It just involves a different, slightly different mechanism, but that is, the reserve fund is available for the sewer and the airport as well as any other appropriation by town. I'd be much more comfortable if this money was there instead of here. Um, I think the financial discipline of a budget is appropriate and we have two other reserve funds coming up that are totally discretionary and uh, not without their potential problems. So I think good governance would say if you want this money, put it under the jurisdiction of the Finance Committee. If, but the Finance Committee already has its reserve fund and is available to the sewer treatment plant, so why isn't it used that way? Because I think, uh, the, I don't agree with that, because I think that that treatment plant runs 24-7, so when something major goes, if I'm then, if I need that additional money to do a, a large repair, and there's nothing there that's cheap, and uh, so if I need to, to make a discretion, make a decision as far as uh, doing a major repair in that plant, I feel, it's, uh, it's important to have that ability to do that. But quite frankly, I believe you have the ability to do it. You just have to reconcile your budget at the end of the year. Right. And if, that, if you end up spending more in your equipment account because you've had an emergency, I find the Finance Committee to be entirely sympathetic to those types of arguments to get the money. Mm -hmm. So why not continue a process that works well, uh, has some oversight to it, and is not one of these general artic these special articles floating out there for years and years. I, I, I don't see the wisdom. I can see the wisdom from our point of view, but I don't see the necessity. And I would urge everybody to um, not support this. Finance Committee Chair Hanel, do you want to take that? The question of how to deal with discretionary funds comes up each year, and the, um, the concerns that town meeting members and finance committee members have are, are different from one fund to another. One reason why the WPCF fund is worth keeping separate is if it were simply uh, being, if, if they were being funded from the reserve fund, which uh, we've already voted on, um, that closes out at the end of the year and there is no carryover balance, which means that every year there would have to be a, a new allotment as part of the reserve fund to deal with, a, um, with the extraordinary expenses here. Um, there has been concern over the years about the degree of oversight to spending, and the term slush fund keeps coming up. Um, we have a, a fairly vigilant uh, person in town hall that watches that sort of thing, and heaven help anyone who gets in her way. <laughs> um, the carryover balances are, are not excessive, um, the main issue I think that town meeting has to deal with is, are there expenses, are they urgent, and um, is the carry forward ability important? 
I think we have restricted the use of discretionary funds to departments that have a need. Uh, one can debate the urgency of it, but if you have the opportunity to commit money within 24 hours, you don't have to wait for another meeting of anybody, not town meeting and not finance committee or anyone else. And I think the oversight that's provided is adequate. This is a discretionary fund that I think is worth supporting. Thank you, John. Ariel? John Hanold spoke to my concern from his long experience, and I really appreciate that. As a principal, oversight sounds really good. In practice, too much oversight can make the people who are working very hard and very creatively to help this town do the most service that we can possibly provide for the least amount of dollars, it can feel oppressive, discouraging, and these words like slush fund to me are very disrespectful. They sort of imply that the people that we have hired to run our town as professional staff, you know, are somehow the occasional suspect, corrupt people of the past, whoever those villains or demons were. I didn't know Bob McDonald before he became our WPCF supervisor. Every action, every proposal, and every word of explanation I have heard out of this man's mouth has cleared up many long-standing questions and concerns that I have had, and I feel like this gentleman keeps proving himself over and over and over to try to be creative and innovative and, again, watch the pocketbook, but actually get things done. And he's not the only one. He's just the one that's at the podium right now. I just feel like, especially, especially also since our finance committee, as well as all of our boards of committees, are mostly hardworking volunteers. We have a process. So the process doesn't move overnight when requests are made. Why burden our boards and committees with extra review of decisions that are going to make complete sense and be necessary anyway? Um, I feel like we actually need to trust and respect the people we have hired unless some event of egregious you know, a lack of common sense or ethics comes to our attention. Thank you, Ariel. Mr. Wisniewski, and then sorry, Ms. Lynch. Oh, sorry, Mike, just after Mark. Mark Wisniewski, Precinct 2. <clears throat> um, having even a small amount of um, holdover every year can be a large amount over time. If you do even two or 3,000 over 10 years, you're gonna have 30 extra thousand dollars in a fund. That actually makes me less like the uh, idea of appropriating funds for discretionary use than more like it. Um, and if, when we do have problems, I'm, there's, all these discussions are not about the individuals. They're about the budget. They're not about the person who's making the budget. They're not about how they use the funds. Whenever there has been a problem, it, uh, it usually goes back to a lack of oversight. It doesn't go back to a too much oversight. We don't see a problem when there's too much oversight of a budget. We see a problem when there's too little oversight of a budget. I tend to agree with Mr. Jensen on this, that this seems to be uh, needing to be in the actual operating budget and not as a special line item. Light item. Thank you. Mike Naughton. I mean, I can wait my turn. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, I don't believe it shows a lack of respect to department heads to ask them to spend money within the regular budget process. And uh, I, I, I am, so far maybe I'm missing something, not convinced by the argument that this fund somehow gives anyone, uh, in this case uh, Mr. McDonald, the uh, ability to spend money quickly that he would not otherwise have. Uh, we had a major sewer line break um, 
a while ago that uh, some of us remember uh, up by the industrial park and a great deal of money was spent in a short period of time and the details of how to finance that were worked out afterwards. Um, the sewer commissioners uh, can meet uh, fairly quickly if necessary. The finance committee can meet fairly quickly if necessary. Uh, the one drawback that I saw with this budget is that to use the reserve fund, which would be the natural way to fund emergency expenses, uh, is that the reserve fund is funded by taxation, uh, whereas this budget is largely funded by sewer user fees. Uh, that's sort of a technical point, uh, and that's, that, was my, that was my reason for abstaining rather than voting against this, because uh, my feeling is that this is a perfectly appropriate use for the reserve fund. In the past, when emergencies have happened, they have, money has been spent to deal with them immediately, and the details have been worked out afterwards as quickly as possible, and that has worked fine. So I don't see why uh, this situation needs to be any different, and it does simply add another warrant article uh, to the warrant, which, which I personally don't believe is necessary. And that's not a sign that I don't trust Mr. McDonald or anybody else. I just, I just think there's a better way to do things. I, I just want to add one thing. Um, so in Miller Falls, there's, a, there's another article in here to do a, what they call an I&I &I, uh, study by an engineering firm uh, in the uh, village of Miller Falls. And so this week, we actually, uh, myself and my chief operator, we went out and we popped, I don't know, two dozen manholes up. And the reason we did this is because last year in 2018, yeah, we had record rains, but we also, uh, the amount of water that we sent over to Irving uh, Wastewater uh, we exceeded our contract with them, so we owed them an additional $107,000. Um, with that being said, then we said, okay, we, we have a bigger problem than we even originally anticipated as far as the I&I &I goes. And so uh, yesterday, in fact, we found a major area where we got, uh, looks like a small stream basically running through our sewer system. Um, and so money like this discretionary fund will help us get to the, these issues quicker so we can avoid uh, larger expenses uh, at the end of the year or, or potential uh, larger expenses. So, but uh, I understand where you're coming from. Rich? Hello? Good afternoon. Good morning. I'm still Rich Kapoor. Um So I really see that this article and three others, so a total of four really in our uh, articles here, have somewhat morphed from an original article years ago that was a DPW discretionary fund. And many years ago, I would hazard a guess, over 20, there was a fund set up because at that point in time, um, the superintendent of the DPW was looking and there were more opportunities for buying items maybe at auctions, whether it were state vehicles or whatever. So there was an account set up that was funded with some sum of, some, some of money to be able to give flexibility to the DPW superintendent. That seemed to have morphed into other departments saying, wow, that's a great idea for me to have a little bit of a fund to cover things that I might not have anticipated in my budget. So the DPW article stands. We have one for wastewater pollution. We have one coming up for the police department. And we have another one for IT for uh, equipment. I really think that those all four should be rolled into their budgets as a line item in their budget that's, you know, titled unanticipated <coughs> costs that then get some scrutiny from finance. And believe me, finance committee goes through the budget after the, they get bird dogged in the front office or second floor office at town hall and really understands what's going on. So all these have morphed of like, this is a way for us to spend this money. What difference does it make? Every year we had a special article for a police cruiser History has told us that typically we need to replace a cruiser every year based on the road miles and the size of the staff we have. Hopefully there will be years when the fleet's built up where we can skip a year. 
I see it the same way. Put $20,000 in your budget as unanticipated capital expenditures if you don't need it, or expenditures period. If you don't need it, you don't use it, it rolls back into the funds. If you need it, it's there for you to use. So I support these articles because they're important in what they do. I just don't necessarily agree with the mechanism of how we're funding these. I think it creates too much debate over something that just needs to have the flexibility for a staff member. Any other comments? David, do you have the microphone? Go ahead. Is no problem? way. I, and that implication I makes my skin crawl a little. Um, I think this is a question of good governance, seriously. And um, like Mark says, one of the th most disturbing parts of this is the carryover. You know, we're trying to deal with a wastewater treatment and keep it on, on a budget, and the loose special articles out there with carryovers uh, I think is bad government. So I think we have the mechanism. To, you, you're not, your department is not getting hurt. I and I is a separate issue entirely. I'm not even sure you can spend this money on I and I because I believe it's a subsidiary budget of the DPW, but that being what it is. Again, I still urge that we vote good governance as opposed to, yeah, good governance here. Thank you, David. Any other comments, questions right here in the front? Veronica Fan of Precinct One. Um, I would really like next year's budget to hear, uh, to have what Rich just said and just have people think more about their budget. And like I've always had a problem like, like with when the, they just, with the discretionary lines. But in this particular case, I would actually vote for this because it is going to come out of sewer user fees as opposed to the general, but next year, if we could think about that with the finance committee and select board and how you how these, and it is specific to people that have major repairs, I know the budgets, but try and plan the budget. That would be really cool. But I think this year I'd like to have it come out of uh, the actual uh, sewer user fees like it's supposed to. Thanks. Carolyn, and then Steve, and then Peter. Okay. Can you hear me now? There you go. Can you hear me now? Yes. I really don't want to prolong this discussion any further than it already has, but I do feel it necessary to point out you can add this money to the operating budget, but you need to understand that right now, cap, cap, well, actually by statute, capital outlay has to be voted as a separate appropriation. Some of the, many of the expenses in these accounts, but not all of them are capital outlay, which means that if you put them in the operating budget, you're going to have to specify how much is going to be appropriate for capital outlay and how much is for non-capital outlay, which is currently for the budget for the expense purposes is $5,000. It's different from the capital improvements capital outlay. So that means, and I'm not saying you can't do this, but just be aware that that means that, for instance, if, um, I don't know, the, the facilities truck that the DPW dies and has to be replaced. If he has this discretionary account, he can actually use that to replace that vehicle. If the money's in his operating budget, he cannot because he cannot use that for a capital piece of equipment. There's a separate. So just to be aware of that when you're discussing this for next year, it's not quite as streamlined as you might like it to be. Thank you, Carolyn. Steve? Uh, I think Carolyn largely addressed my comments. Okay. Uh, Peter? Peter? Yes, Peter Gore, Precinct 2. Um, I, know, I understand that this money's coming from sewer user fees, so I can understand why that wouldn't necessarily be a, an easy one for the Finance Committee to deal with. But it still sounds like this should have been part of the, um, the WPCF budget because anything that they didn't use would wind up in their retained earnings, and then they could use, they, it's still the same process to go ask for the ability to spend out of retained earnings and there would still be the oversight, and I think that would um, go a long way to Mr. Jensen's comment about good governance and having some oversight 
and it would still be part of the budget and we'd have a little bit more understanding of how this has all come about. So is that a correct assumption that if this were part of the budget, anything they didn't spend would wind up in the uh, WPCF retained earnings and then they could use the same process going to the, the uh, finance committee to ask for the ability to spend from their re retained earnings? No. Carolyn? Only town media can authorize appropriations from town for retained earnings. Okay, thank you. Any other comments on Article 16? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Only town meeting can appropriate. Only town meeting. <laughs> Third time's a charm. Only town meeting can appropriate money from retained earnings. Any other questions or comments on Article 16? Seeing none, we can vote. All those in favor of Article 16 signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed? No. And I'll declare it a majority. With that, it's time to break for lunch at Article 17. Now, um, I'm going to have Deb explain this. <laughs> I just want to remind everybody that when you're all finished with lunch and you're coming back into the theater to please check back in with Wendy because we need to obtain a quorum to continue. Thank you. We're going to reconvene here at 1 o'clock. Okay, so we're dissolved until 1 o'clock. We'll come back with Article 17 at 1 o'clock. <laughs>